Doc, I just want to jump right into this. All the things that have gone on during the regular season, the preseason, now you're in the playoffs, and now I remember you having this the speech. This is right where we want to be playing against the Lakers in the NBA Finals. Like, what was the mindset going into that game? Uh, just playing. Like, I thought we were ready. I thought we were prepared. Uh, as I, I told you before, I, I thought we were, we were going to be the better team. It's funny when you look back on that. And, again, I don't ever notice this, some of this stuff. How We were like a big underdog. And uh, when I look back on I don't understand – who didn't see what I saw? Like I, I said the same thing in my know, post-game speech, Doc. I was like, I don't understand why you guys all convinced me that we weren't going to beat these guys. I don't see what they're – I don't see how the Lakers were good that year. No, I don't – it's it's funny. I mean, they were – they had Kobe, but when I look at them and us, I'm like, what does everybody see? You know, <laughs> listen, and I actually gave them, okay, they have Phil Jackson. I get yeah. that. All right, I'll give you that. But come on. And, and I kept thinking that um, – so it was almost for me, like I couldn't wait to get my hands on them. You know, yeah. that, was, that was my feeling. And uh, I didn't want us to be so amped up that, that we couldn't focus on, on what we needed to do too. So I had to calm me down uh, to make sure that the, you guys uh, were ready. But I couldn't wait to get my hands on them. I just thought we were ready. One thing that happened in this game, uh, Paul Pierce went down and got to get carried off. Like, in, what are the emotions going through for you when you see that happen? Well, see, I had a different perspective than everybody else um, because the fans, at least, were watching TV, right? Um, they saw him in a wheelchair uh, and all this. I didn't see any of that. I never knew about the wheelchair I remember going in the press conference after the game and someone asked me about a wheelchair and I was like, what wheelchair? What are you talking about? Yeah. I was, I was in the game. So I didn't know any of this. Um, now I thought Paul may be out when he got hurt. It looked it, the way he grabbed his knee and I had had an ACL as a player. I honestly, in my mind thought, okay, we have to win game one. That's all I thought about. I, I didn't, I didn't think about the series as a whole at that point. I was thinking somehow, let's win this game and then see how we can win the series. And my entire focus was on game one. That was it. Once he went down in that huddle, if you remember, I think I walked in the huddle and I can't remember. But I, I think I said, guys, we're going to win this game. All right? We're going to win this game. And I was telling that to them and to you guys. So you believed it, you know, because at that point, I didn't think Paul was coming back. Uh, and then I remember Brian McKeon, you know, Dr. McKeon comes up to me, Paul's good. He's coming back. And I'm like, what? And he says, <laughs> and, and I looked at Eddie cause Eddie, you know, Eddie Lacerda at the time thought he was out too. He was on the floor with me. And so then I look at Eddie, can he, can he go in? And he, and he said, yeah. And I was like, I was shocked. I was shocked. Just like, I'm sure. The Laker fans who saw Paul go in the wheelchair, they think it was like planned, like we planned this, this crazy scheme to, to mislead the Laker fans and players. No, it was, it was Paul being Paul. <laughs> you guys, you're not going to want to miss this one. It's game one of the 08 finals against the Lakers. Paul Pierce goes out but comes back and has an uh, unbelievable game, especially an unbelievable third quarter. Doc, thanks yeah. for stopping by. Thanks, Cal. Eddie, I just want to get like a 30,000 foot view. What were you thinking going into the series? How confident were you and, and the team? Well, growing up, you got to think, I, I was a Laker fan. My dad was a big Laker fan, Magic Johnson, Showtime. Um, so to be in the finals, right, and have a Celtics uniform on and playing against the Lakers, that was the rivalry I grew up on watching. It was just, it was almost a dream come true, man. It, it wasn't almost, it was a dream come true to be able to play in the NBA Finals. Even though when I was a kid, I thought I'd have a Laker uniform on, but to have the Celtics uniform, which to me is, there's no uniform that can rival it. It's just a special place um, to play basketball, to play sports in general. You know, if you look at the Patriots, you look at the Red Sox, just the fans there are amazing. They are the best in the world. So it was, uh, it was a dream come true, to say the least. Were you buying into the hype of, like, this is a, the most 
iconic rivalry we've in, in probably all of basketball. Were you like, yeah, I'm a, now I'm a part of that story, or was it just about, man, we got to figure out a way to win. It doesn't matter if we're playing the Lakers or whoever. That's what it was. It was just, hey, we just got to win. We got to win. It would be all for nothing. Everything we did, you know, from the start of training camp in Italy um, to the point to where we, you know, game sevens, uh, three straight uh, – three, two game sevens, you know, the opening against Atlanta, then game seven against Cleveland. It would have been all for nothing if we didn't finish or uh, complete our mission and our, our – our, our goals. So to me, that's what, what the mindset was. Now, looking back at it, I could definitely look at it and say, hey, man, I was a part of something special, man. Like, it, it's the biggest rivalry in, in basketball. Um, and, and to do it the way we did, that comeback victory, that's historic. I mean, it's just – looking back on it is, is amazing. But when you're in you the moment, you're just trying to grind. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, say that again? I said when you're in the moment, you're just trying to grind and just trying to get that W. Eddie, man, thanks for stopping by. This is game one of the NBA Finals. All the hype. Lakers-Celtics doesn't get better than this. Once again, man, Eddie House, a big, big contributor in game four in the comeback win. Man, what an unbelievable game. And to bring some insight into this game one and everything surrounding the NBA Finals, we got Kendrick Perkins. So, Perk, first of all, I I want to ask you, going into the Finals, you know, we got past Detroit at grueling playoff series against three teams. Now you're in the finals. What was the hype like? And did you buy into the Lakers Celtic rivalry at the time? I mean, yeah, it was, it was difficult, man, because at the end of the day, we knew our goal, our ultimate goal was to win the championship. But you like, you've been there, but I'm like, man, we're in the NBA finals. Like, you know, you walk in the shoot around, it's different. It's a yeah. thousand cameras in there. You got your own podium. You know, it's, you know, only talking town, you know, and then it's the Celtics, Lakers, robbery, Paul Pierce, KG, Ray Allen, Kobe Bryant. Like, you got all this going on. You And then you're like, man, I'm really part of history right now. So you're trying to stay focused, but also enjoy the moment because you don't never know when you're going to get back to the finals. You know, you can't take that for granted. But you know, at the, at, at the end of the day, you got a bigger goal in hand that you got to stay focused, you got to block out all the nonsense that's in the outside world, family, friends. You got to lock in on what's at hand and actually go play the game. Initially, what were you thinking when you saw Pierce go down? I was like, oh, no, nah, not now. I was like, it's over. There's no way we're going to beat the Lakers. I first, You know, the first thing come to your mind, you think the worst. Like, yeah. when you see somebody go down, they have to go out in a wheelchair, you like, okay, so what are we about to do right now? Like, how are we about to get through this? I mean, you could just feel the energy being sucked out of the garden. So it was like, wow, no, P, please tell me it's not serious. Watch KG in game one. You think, like, there is no one on the planet right now at his position that can touch him. No, no, no. He was the best power forward in the game. Like, at that point in time, KG with the OA Celtics, I was taking him over Dirt, Paul Gasol, uh, Tim Duncan, like in 08, it was different. No one was stopping Kevin Garnett, not the defensive player of the year. Not a, He was a walk in 2020 if we needed him to be. Like, no one, no one was stopping KG. Like, you wasn't stopping him from getting that ring, period. Yeah. All right, Perk, you brought great insight to this game one of the NBA Finals. Thanks for stopping by, and thanks for uh, breaking down the uh, what, how, how soft Pal Gasol is. Uh, would you call him a soft Twinkie? I said he was, he was softer than a hot Twinkie. Hot Twinkie. All right. <laughs> All right, Perk. We'll talk to you later. All right, Scott.